Hi there. We meet again uh, today. Uh, I'm going to start with the first part of the ravioli pot assignment. Um, this is one of my favorite activities um, because uh, you work fairly small scale. And again, it gives you a sense of intimacy with the work that you're doing, and it allows you to take the time and care to really get something precise and well-developed in the form itself. So we're gonna do that. And the first step is to decide what shape you wanna make your piece. And uh, so the name ravioli or envelope pot comes about because we start with um, these uh, ideas here. These are, um, these are silhouettes here that I've cut out little patterns and I can make a pot with this or a pot with this. The way they're made is you cut them out uh, from slabs of clay. We take uh, thin slabs of clay, we use this pattern and we cut it out. And then, um, and then we um, take this and we cut it out twice. And then we put the edges together and make sure there's some air in the middle and that creates the form that we're going to use for the body of our pot. And then we start looking at the anatomy of pottery and we start um, putting together, um, uh, you know, you look at it because pottery has uh, in it um, the same kinds of uh, ideas uh, of the human form. The words are used often the same. So for instance, here's a simple mug and this mug has a handle um, it has a lip. Um, you might call this a neck or, uh, and then the body of the pot, and then this would be the foot of the pot. And as the pots get more complicated, um, they get more and more of those kinds of names. There's ears, there's, there's or lugs, there's, um, uh, you can say hips, neck, all kinds of qualities in a pot. So we'll start, once we make our, our form, we'll start asking ourselves, do we want to add a foot? Do we want to add um, a lid, a, a neck? Um, what do we need? Do we need some, uh, some ornament on it? We'll start asking ourselves that question. But first we have to make the form itself. And to start with, I'm gonna show you uh, just a couple of techniques for making uh, textured slabs. So that's our first start here. I'm going to make some textured slabs, cut some things out, and we'll see if we can join them or if they're too soft for that. So I'm going to move the camera here to the workspace. Here we are. See the workspace before you here. And I want you to be able to see the workspace clearly. So we'll get that going. There we go. So. So let's make a couple of textured slabs. So what we have now, I have some clay here. And this clay, actually this is not the clay, this is not what I'm after. Let me get the clay that I wanna use. This is good clay to use for other projects here. We'll put that, wrap that up. Remember we keep our clay covered with plastic as long as we're not, it's not in use so it stays uh, moist. Soft plastic. Here is the clay that I'm going to use for this project. And uh, I'm going to make two different textured slabs here. Here's one. And you see there's no texture on it. At this point, not very, very little, and I'm going to create a uh, texture for it. So there's that. And um, so to start with, I'm going to use one of my favorite textures. It's just so easy to do. Um, it, almost, it almost bothers me how easy it is. And the quality of the texture in part will be determined by how thick a slab you start with. If I start with a thinner slab, then when I go to, I, I stretch these out to get a, to change the texture a bit. And as I stretch it out, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to get uh, more soft and subtle. And so um, that's, that's what happens. And so the thicker it is, the more stretching you can do. And so that changes the quality of the texture. Now, this is just a simple stick. It's got a bit of a sharp edge uh, here, which I like. And I'm just going to start hitting. 
And this is actually quite soothing and meditative. And what I recommend for this technique is that you hit it many, many times in the same place over and over, over again. And that has some real uh, benefits uh, for the texture. And you will see that as we, as we go forward. Um, uh, one, you can really exaggerate the effects. What's happening as I hit it again and again and again and again, the, you can see these ridges are forming and the ridges start to fold over each other. So what that does is it kind of creates a little protected area, which you'll see when I stretch it out. But if I were to say, take this and paint it with another a colored slip, a clay with colorant in it, like a, a black slip or a red slip or a blue slip, and then I stretch it out, the, the slip will stay on the uh, ridges, the top ridges, and then the spaces in between where everything has folded over, that will um, not have any slip on it. So you'll get uh, kind of a tiger stripe or a zebra stripe effect um, with it. So that's a very cool effect you can have here. You could also do this to the sides, but I don't think you'll need to work on that. We won't need that for this project. You could hit the sides, you can texture them different ways. I'm just going over it a little bit more. So that's a nice textured surface there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it out. And I do that by actually throwing the slab down on this board. And the board uh, is covered with cloth, so it doesn't stick. You can also do this with plaster, um, with um, the plaster boards that are used in, in construction. Um, and so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this and it's going to stretch. And in order for me to do that successfully, as I throw it, I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to pull it towards myself. And when it hits, I want it to hit right in the middle, right in the center. I can't hit in the, if I hit it this way, it's just going to crumple up. If I hit it in the back, it'll create a hump in the middle with a, um, with a very thin edges. I need to have it hit right in the middle. And for this, I have to stand up. I reach out and I stretch it. And this is going to be interesting because everything on the table is jumping. Got to make sure things don't fall off the table. Moving things a little bit. So let's watch it again. Again, it's going to come in and it's going to land and stretch out. And you can actually start to hear it and feel it. But even with this little bit of stretching that's gone on, you can see the texture is altering and changing. It's getting very exciting. The ridges are spreading out and there's deep valleys that have a different quality about them. So let's keep watching that. And you want to keep going until it's thin enough for your project. And this is about right. I think here that's about thin enough. So that's a good start uh, for a slab. I'm going to move this slab um, off, and uh, then I'll I'll make another. I'll show you one more te texture technique here. So here's one more slab. Again, I'm starting with a thick uh, piece of clay. And let's see if I can smooth it up a little bit. Okay, so here, I want it just a little bit smoother on top. This is, you know, we're making slabs without actually ever using a roller, which is another way to do it. There's so many different ways to make slabs and over time I'll show you many of them. So I'm gonna start drawing on this surface. And when I do that, um, so I'll start, it's a very simple idea. I'm just gonna go in about an eighth of an inch with this needle tool. So not very deep at all. 
Um, you don't need to go very deep. And I'm going to make here a spiral finishing up in a kind of arrowhead there. And who knows, let's see, over here, I'm gonna draw three squares. Let's see what that does. And what's interesting is that it's not interesting. In other words, when you learn to draw, one of the things you're instructor, professor will tell you is that you want your lines to be expressive. You want if the line needs to get thinner and thicker, you want to express the quality in your lines. And this has none of that. Um, so I'm going to look now for a few other things to do with this. So let me see if I can find a few. Other. I always look for things lying around that might be interesting. I would have bricks. So here's a here's a brick. I'm going to use a part of this to see what this does. So I'm just going to push that right into my spiral. And that's interesting. And I'm going to use this to make a line like that. But even do it here too. So I'm just, I'm just kind of making impressions and you'll see what happens. They, they don't look that exciting and your, your teachers in drawing will tell you, oh, well, of course they're not exciting. You're not making your lines expressive, but that's not my job. That's the job of the, of the when, I, when I stretch it out. Got all kinds of things to play with here. So when I stretch it out, the stretching will actually create um, some interesting pattern here. I'm gonna push that, these right in the middle, these kind of dimples. I don't know what they'll do, but it's interesting to play with. And maybe do a kind of rounded indentation here. So let's see what this creates as we stretch it out. So you can see I've got a spiral, I've got these uh, squares with these dimples and then these incisions around the outside, these impressions. And then we're gonna stretch that and see what we get. Already with one throw, you can see the lines are starting to open up and get more expressive. And I can also, if I want this spiral to be oval, I can just pull it in one way only. If I want it to be even, I can go both ways. So you're, you're actually designing with each throw. And you're limited by how deep you pressed the, the original, how deep you went with your original cut to make the spiral, because there's a point at which that, those indentations will become the thinnest part. And uh, so, you can see the squares here with their, their indents in the middle are really becoming quite exciting. It's getting quite oval. Let's see if I go the other way a little bit. And maybe one more. That's about as far as I think we can go. So you can see uh, quite a lot of excitement there. And then when it comes to making the pot, I can actually, I'm only gonna use part of it. I can say, well, I want that spiral or I want one of these squares to be featured. And um, when I have a pattern like this, which is asymmetrical, this is a symmetrical pattern. So I can cut it out exactly the same. With this one, I would have to cut it out and flip it over for the second piece to make sure uh, the patterns are staying on the outside. That'll make sense to you as you do it. So I'm gonna use uh, the linear one first to see how that goes. So I'm gonna move this here and I'll come back with the first slab we made. So this one's feeling still a little thick, so I'm gonna stretch it out just 
uh, maybe once or twice more. Here's once, that might be enough. Because it is soft clay, so having it a little thicker makes it a bit easier on the, on the working. So I can make the lines go up the side or I can make them go front to back. So let's try, let's try a little front to back initially. So I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna use my needle tool to cut it out. Here's my needle tool. So I'm just gonna go and cut this out of the clay slab. And remember, I have said for the second piece, I have to flip it over. So there's my first piece and I'll cut here and here. So it'll let me get access to it. And as I look at it, it does look a little thick, which means my piece will be a little heavy um, especially on the outside here. So if I want, I'll show you what I can do about that in a minute. Let's take that and move it over here. And then remember, I'm gonna flip this over and I can use, I can make it go vertical on this side. That might be nice, have the lines go more vertical. And I can, you know, I can place it anywhere I want, but remember now I've, I use the stripe side. So now I'm using the non-stripe side. And that's really important because It's an asymmetrical form. So in order to keep the pattern, have a pattern on the outside of each one, I really have to I really have to um, flip it over. And this will make more sense to you as we go along. So there's the start of it. I'm going to take this clay off here. And we'll pull that out so that makes it easier to get to. And there's my second part. So we have our two pieces for our pot right there. And I'm going to move all this clay right now. Let's get this out of the way. I can use it later if I need it. And just so you can see this, I'm gonna um, show you how the other piece might work. I'm gonna take this one and let's cut it here. All right, do I want the spiral? I don't like those three dots. So we're gonna do that. Um, let's see if I can get this more in here where you can see it. Um, it goes that way, so I need to go that way. Or another way to do this. There we go. There we go, you can see the pattern now. And I'm just gonna Gonna cut that out. So I'm cutting the other pattern out. And let's do one like that. And remember this pattern is symmetrical, so I don't have to worry about flipping it over. I can use it the same way when I'm cutting out pieces. So now I have these textured slabs cut to the shape of my silhouettes.
Now your assignment is that you take the same silhouette and you cut it out six times because you're going to make three pots. And each time you make the pot, it has to look different than the last one, even though you're using exactly the same silhouettes. And I'll show you some examples of that. So now, as I start to work on this, I'm gonna do one more thing, is that the clay feels a little bit thicker than I want it. Well, that's easy to deal with. Take these off the table here. Toss that over there. And so if I want this to be a little thinner, it's easier to, now even, now that it's smaller, it's super easy to stretch out. And you say, well, but that's no longer the shape you want. Well, that's true. So now I just put the silhouette back on and I trim it one more time. And so I get the silhouette that I want. But I have a little bit thinner clay, which is also what I want. And I'll do the same here. Just a little bit there. I'm just gonna throw it a couple of times just to just stretch it out a little bit. There we go. Nice. So then I cut this one out one more time. And those are the beginnings of my pot right there. And so now I'm gonna be joining it um, one side to another. So I'm gonna start, I can lay it over on the side that's textured. If I'm very gentle and I don't push down, I won't change the texture at all. I'm just gonna lay this over now. And I'm gonna use a scoring tool. Now this is a scoring tool. This is uh, called an onion slicer. That's what it, you, it is uh, when you go to a cooking shop to buy it. This is a very inexpensive one, my favorite. It's, uh, and I've cut it in half, but it's a 99 cent to $2 item. Uh, if you can still find them in the cooking stores, I see them rarely now. But um, you can also use a fork. What you don't wanna use is your, your, your uh, needle tool. That just takes too long. But you can see here, you can really score this up. And this is how you join things. You score them, you slip them, and then you press them together. So I'm scoring this. So that's the joining. I kind of jumped right over that, but I think we're gonna need to, to really emphasize that for any time you join something, you wanna score it, slip it and press it. And the rules are pretty simple. If you, if you, um, if it's plastic like this, you really don't have to score it at all. You can just press it together. You don't need scoring and slipping. I almost always do score and slip. It makes a stronger joint and I don't have to press as hard to get a good seam, a good joint. So um, it, for me, it's, it's always worth doing, but you, you don't have to if it's plastic, but if your piece is leather hard, um, or if, you, if it's leather hard, you have to score. And if it's bone dry, you can't join it. It doesn't join well when it's bone dry. There are exceptions to everything, but those are the basic rules there. So I'm, I've scored all the way around this piece now, both of them. And um, so now I'm gonna add slip. And slip, if this is just water with some dry, as the clay has been dry, I just took bits of it and, and slaked it down in the water. So it's a nice kind of creamy consistency now. It's kind of like kefir um, or pancake batter, a little thinner than pancake batter. And you wanna make sure you get a slip in all the little crevices that you've made. And this is gonna soften the piece really nicely and it's gonna, those pieces are gonna really wanna to hold together. It's gonna to make a nice joining surface. The scoring and slipping. When you score, you're, you're really quadrupling, maybe by a factor of 10, you're 10 times the, the surface area. You're creating a lot more surface area to kind of hold on to each other as you join it. When you slip, 
you're getting making sure that um, all of those little crevices get liquid in them so that they can't have air in them. The slip also softens the clay and makes it more amenable to joining. But the other thing you really don't want to do is you do not want to trap air ever. You don't want air in your clay. Air will lead to things blowing up in the kiln if you get an air bubble in your clay. Don't want that. It will lead to things blowing up in the kiln. So we're going to avoid that. So now I've scored and slipped these pieces. And I'm going to shape them a little bit. So because if I put them together now, they'll just be flat. And I need them to be kind of rounded and puffed out. So what I'm going to do is gently pick this up. I'm going to try not to touch the texture area. And then my fingers underneath are just wiping like this. And they're going to kind of belly it out a little bit, push it out. It's OK if I get some slip on my hands. It's always going to happen. I'm all right with that. I'm going to kind of bend this a little bit, get a nice kind of curve here. I want to get it started in the direction I want it to go. And I do want it to be rounded. And you can see, I'll show you in a minute here, I've kind of prepared uh, these newspaper, in this case, I think they're brown paper bag, but the same, take crumple up some newspaper or some paper bag, wrap it with tape here. And I have a little form that will hold the piece. I'm prepared to just, I just want it to hold. It doesn't have to be perfectly the right shape, but I want it to keep that roundness to it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm building up this roundness. There's one, and I'll do that with the other one. So after this step, I'm going to let it sit for a while because it's really soft clay. I want it to get leather hard. I'll let it sit for a while. Then I'll score and slip it. And I'll join it. Um, uh, I'll score, slip it again, and then join it at all these edges. And you can see it's going to make a form. Um, I don't want to get too leather hard because it needs to be, I need it to be standing up like this. In fact, I might try to prop it up with something a little bit to keep that shape the way I want it. So there we are. There's a start to, to the piece. And uh, this will end part one. You can see I've got textured pieces. I've shown you two different shapes, silhouettes. I've talked about scoring and slipping. I've shown you two different texture techniques. And then we will uh, be back to join these and finish work on finishing them up a little bit. So until next time, stay safe and make lots of art. <laughs>